Welcome back everybody. Today I wanted to talk about SVGs in Webflow. Before I get ahead of myself, I'll show you what we're gonna be doing just so you know if this video is for you or not. So I'm gonna show you how to incorporate an SVG into your Webflow project and be able to change the color of that SVG so you don't have to upload a new file with a new color attached every single time you need to use it in a different way. But I'm also gonna show you how to change it based on a CMS item and color. I know this is a big issue in the community. A lot of people have been struggling and I figured out a way how to do it. So I will show you how to dynamically change it based on CMS items as well. So another issue that people run into with SVGs in Webflow is that the files are too long and they go past that 10,000 character limit Limit. Now I will show you how I found a solution to this using a CDN with a little custom code I figured something out so if this has been an issue for you that will be coming later as well But let's back up a little bit talk about SVGs and why they're great why they're important So SVG stands for a scalable vector graphic and they are great because it's an image that when it grows or shrinks it's not gonna stay pixelated like you're used to seeing with certain images. It's actually not based on pixels, it's based on math and numbers inside that have different points along a path. And as you scale it, it's gonna fill that based on the size that you scale. They're great because they're not gonna get all pixelated as you expand your image or change it based on the viewport size. They are also great because they help with file size. They're gonna be a little bit more condensed and smaller than a typical more detailed JPEG or PNG image as well. And they actually have a little bit more detailed information about how they're constructed and built behind the scenes. So for screen readers and things that need access to that data, it actually even helps with that a little bit more than a normal image. Now SVGs won't always be the go-to case. Sometimes you might need a normal JPEG image or a PNG image. And there's actually a chart that I found from Webflow themselves that kind of highlight when the different use cases are and when you should use either. SVGs are better maybe for just simple graphics, maybe a solid color. While if you want something a little bit more detailed, like an actual image or photo of something, then obviously a PNG or JPEG with that actual image file will be a little bit better, but you can always refer to this for an example. So if you have been struggling to use SVGs and you want a clean way to have a clear graphic, maybe you're working on a logo for your site or your company, stick around, I'll show you how I did some things and it's all gonna be Hunger Games themed. Love me some Hunger Games. Prequel series has just announced its casting. That book came out kind of quietly. I don't even know if you guys know that there is a prequel coming for the Hunger Games series. Super excited, always been a big fan. Let's dive right in and see what we can do. All right, so I'm in this basic web page here. This is gonna be the Hunger Games page. Very simple to add an SVG. Really, all you would have to do is just add an image. You can press Command K. You can add an image and just click on your image there. And this is an SVG. Simple enough, right? So that's if you wanna just add it as a static sort of SVG image. But this is no fun. You can't change the color of this. There's no point. Another solution we can do is by adding a code embed. So I'm gonna press Command K again. I'm gonna add an embed right here. And this is where you can add custom code. And SVG is really just a tag that has the properties defined. So in order to get those as code, I can go to Figma. It's a great design tool if you're not familiar, a lot of power. So basically I have an icon in here. And one great trick I can do is once I have this image set the way that I want it, I can just right click on it and I can say copy as an SVG. I can go back to Webflow paste that right in there and it's got this long code because this is all about a path definition that's filling in the color as it's set now instead of going with the base settings i can change the width and the height maybe to 100 percent so that way it's more controllable based on whatever we put it in and in the path fill right now it's black this bone arrow is black but the best trick here if i just say current color now it'll look to the current text color and just change based on that this is all it is. It's the best little trick. I didn't even know about it, but in one word, you can change everything. So save and close. Now we've got this here. You can see that arrow is faded, and now it's looking to the color to fill it in. So in typography, if I change this around, amazing. Now I have an SVG that I can change the color however I want it to. So if let's say that I made it a green color, and the best part is it, it absorbs any sort of color stylings you set. So I can change the hover color to something else. I can make it a darker green. It interacts just as you would expect. And right now it's 100% width and height. But let's say that I wanted to put this inside of a div. I can give a width and height to this div instead, maybe something like 
five VW. And now the uh, SVG will be 100% of the div, which is scaling based on the viewport size. So you'll see that it shrinks and grows just like that. Another way, instead of using the Figma copy and paste method, if you already have an SVG element, so right here I have a tree. This is just another SVG image. Say you downloaded this from the internet or something. I can just go here and click details. I can open this little up arrow, view it in the browser like this, right click, view page source, and this will give me that code for that SVG as well. So then I can add a, another embed, copy this one, I'll change the fill to current color, just like we did before. I can change the width and height if I'd like, and I'll save and close that. And we've got a tree that is also adjustable for the font color. All right, so now let's get to the more interesting stuff and in how to work with SVGs with a collection list. This is just a different page here and it's got all the districts and some descriptions of the districts. They are all collection items. So each district has the title and the description and importantly, they all have their own color set. So it's just a hex value color. As you'll see there, it changes per district. It's just random. Back in here, let's say I wanna add an icon for each of these, but I want that color for each of the icons. I don't want to upload a new SVG file for each different item because that could be potentially hundreds of things. So this is a easier way to do that. I can add more embed just like we did before. And for the custom code, let's say I'm going to copy that tree SVG source code again, paste that right in there. And just like we did before, the fill, I could do current color. I can save this and now Everything absorbs that thing, because remember they're all the same items, so you do it once, it'll bleed into all the other CMS items. So now for this tree to absorb the item's color itself, I can just get the text color. Remember anything purple refers to the collection list. I can just get it from the color field, and there we go. Now each SVG is absorbing the color of our CMS items that we have set. And a different way to do this, let's say I don't get the text color from there, I can actually just get the current color. Since it's just a hex value it's looking for, I can add a field here. Remember this purple icon, because we're working within a collection list, it allows me to dynamically add fields from each item. I can just put color here. And when I save and close, it has the same effect. So it's a really powerful way to keep these icons dynamic and it really helps. And again, change the height and the width if you need to. But now instead of uploading a new SVG with the color set within Figma or externally, I can do it a lot faster with the power of this. Now here comes the tricky part. Some of you have run into this issue before. Let's say I get an icon like this Mockingjay pin. Now this is a little bit more detailed and in depth as an SVG. So when I get the page source and I copy this, just like we did before with the tree and simpler icons, if I want to put the Mockingjay as the SVG instead, you'll see I get this error. Custom code cannot see to 10,000 characters. So you'll see this is very long. This is very common with SVGs and a lot of people have run into issues where they can't fit them in here. So the trick we just went through is now irrelevant because it doesn't fit. So how do we get around this? My solution was using a CDN and that stands for a content delivery network. And I actually did a video about this recently. So check that out if you want a little bit more in depth detail about that. But basically it's a way to host your code somewhere else. So basically we would put this chunk of code hosted externally and then just import it into Webflow and that CDN almost is like a middleman that will connect the two things together. So rather than hitting the code limit here, we have a lot less code that just says, hey, pull it in from this external source and then that will have the same effect and we can do a similar process down the line. Now you'll see here though, the path, this fill color is what we do want to target, right? The fill is where we want to add our current color. So we don't want to have that external because even if we write current color outside of Webflow, it's not going to be able to dynamically affect it the way we want it to. So my solution to this was only pulling in the part that's really long. So basically this D equals, this is all just kind of like the path definition of this Mockingjay icon. This really long, ugly numbers, I'm just gonna get rid of all of this and put that externally. So if I were to delete that, basically I would have a variable here that says path, and then I still have access to the fill color the way that I would want it to. And that way I can still access the dynamic color changes, but this character limit is not relevant anymore because this part will be externally hosted in GitHub. So I'll show you what I mean by that, but that's kind of the overview. All right, so you'll see here, I'm in a text editor. 
This is Visual Studio Code. It's just a code editing program that you can uh, work with different code files. And basically I just, I put the D equals, which is that whole ugly path that I was just talking about. All I have is this, right? I basically set up a GitHub repository. And again, I did a video about this recently, but if you go to this site, GitHub, you are able to host code and set up everything you need. It's a version control tool, very powerful. But again, this is not a GitHub video, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it. But basically, you're gonna add a new repository and upload your code to it. So for time's sake, I'm not gonna go through every step of how to set up a GitHub repository. Once you're able to push this code and add that file, this is just gonna be a TXT file, just simple plain text that we can work with. You'll see here, I have this Mockingj text, and this is that whole ugly path that we want, right? So now how do we tell Webflow to look to this code right here and pull in this? Well, we need that sort of middleman like I was saying. So this is the JS Deliver. It is a CDN, open source network. It basically just provides a URL that will connect the two resources together. Again, look to that last video I did if you want a little more info. To make it easier, I'm just gonna show you the code and you can copy and paste this and do whatever you want with it. So breaking this down a little bit, it might be scary if you're not familiar with code. The most important part is this URL right here. So this is the CDN link that connects Webflow with GitHub code that we've set up. This whole first part is all boilerplate up until the GH. This is all just the network that they are connecting. And then this part is your GitHub username. Mine is Colin K. And then you'll see here it's Colin K, Webflow, and then the file name that you're using, which is mockingj1.txt. So you'll see in Webflow, it follows that same path structure, colon k webflow mockingj1.txt. So this code basically says, I'm gonna fetch this URL, and when it calls that, what's returned is, is this piece of code that we wrote, right? And now I'm gonna take that, turn it into plain text, and I'm going to store it in this variable, then create a new SVG element. Probably a lot to absorb, don't worry too much about it, you can copy and paste this, but the only fields you will have to change is just your link to the to your own repository with the file that you're trying to do. And then it'll create an SVG element here and then inject that somewhere into your Webflow project wherever you tell it. Basically, like I said before, to minimize all that extra code, all you have to do is define the basic SVG part but where that big long number format comes from, we are just going to plug in the variable here, which is the actual returned code from GitHub. So we've got the basic shortened version that has all the fields we need. We have our current color set, right? Because we still have the fill color as current color. And as long as we set that later in the text color, it'll use that to absorb. And you can also change the height and the width here. It's a little bit off the screen, but if I scroll, you'll see I have it set to width 100% and height auto, so it'll absorb whatever it's inside. Now this part's important too. It's going to build this SVG icon, but then we have to tell it, okay, what do you want to do with this? Where do we want to put this? I'm going to, in each of these collectionless items, I will make a div and I'm going to give it a class name of SVG icon div. So now this is almost like a, a holder for our our icon. And you'll see it absorbs some styling because I had already had those set. So this is basically just a box where we're going to put our icons and each one of our collectionless items has this. It just has a width and a height set, and now our icon will absorb these properties themselves. And it's absolutely positioned to the top right. So when I go back to this code here, this is getting all of those divs that we just made, the top right divs of all these items, and it's saying for every one of those, put the SVG inside it. So the div.innerHTML is equal to this element that we just created. Each of these elements has the same icon, so it's using that same Mockingj fill path, but the important part is it's gonna to look to the current color of each of those items. So if I were to save this right now, they would all be the same color because the text color is all white for all of them. But if I make sure I'm on the div where the icon lives, and go back here to our dynamic style settings again. I'm gonna get the text color from the district color that I have set. Now, it's tricky to work with because it's JavaScript and you can't see this in the preview, but if I publish this and then I go to this link here, you'll see they are all there. So this is the beautiful Mockingj icon that is way too large to fit within the constraints of the Webflow 10,000 character limit. But using this approach, you can put the big ugly part in an external source like GitHub and then just fetch that, put it in a variable and use the minimized code there and just have that hidden variable there. And as long as you have your current color set for each of the icons, the fill color will be absorbed for that. Now I know this might be very confusing, 
I don't want to make this video super long and go into the details of GitHub, but let me know if you have questions in the comments or look up some resources on GitHub separately. It's not too hard to set up the repository and just push this code there. It'll just involve using your terminal. This is the workaround for SVGs that are super long and don't fit within Webflow. So now I hope you've learned a little bit more about SVGs and how to work with them within Webflow, especially in the CMS context, to have them dynamically update based on your items. What I did might be a sort of long-winded roundabout way of doing it. There might be a simpler solution out there. Maybe Webflow will come up with a better one soon, or maybe there already is one, and I just thought way too hard about it. So if you know a better solution, definitely let me know in the comments below. But for now, I wish you guys the best. Keep working on your projects. Good luck with everything, and you know, may the odds be ever in your favor.